Welcome back everyone, back here again to show you how I'm going to make this style of frame for cut comb sections with a few modifications. Now as you can see if I pan back a little bit I've got a whole heap of goodies here ready to go so let's go and get into it. Right, let's get going. Step one, we'll start with something easy. Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the Pepsi light bottle. Now this one's 1.25 litres. The first thing I do is I just get rid of the label. I'll put that one out of the way. Rip the label off and there's a little bit of a glue stain that I'll remove uh, with this uh, goo stain remover. The bottle's then given a nice clean wash and it's ready to go. Now if you have a look, that's the section we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through uh, just below the area that I need. And if I get in here with a blade, I'll just move this out of the way. I'll get a sharp blade, make a bit of an incision to start with, and then I'll just get a pair of scissors in there and then very quickly just cut that off. Now there's a couple of ways that you can make these little discs. First of all, an easy way would be to get in and flex this. You can make this either before or afterwards, but what we could do, get in and trace around here, trace around here with a marker, pull it out, and of course we could get in and cut out the discs using a pair of scissors. But for me, I use a different technique. Come over here and have a look. I've got my wood lathe set up. Now what I did was uh, I got a piece of old firewood actually, it hasn't got to be anything flash. I turned it to the diameter that I need for these bottles. By the way that diameter is about 86 millimeters external and you can see the bottle slips on. Now you can see what's going to happen next. I bring up the tailstock and the tailstock supports the end of the bottle. I'll lock it in place. And then what I'm going to do is I have to pick my flat section. In this case, I'm going to be making 30 millimeter discs. So I'll pick my starting point, just put a mark. And then if I come in over the top at every 30 millimeters, I'll mark out where I'm going to make a cut. Now all I'm going to do is use a skew chisel, a long point of a skew chisel, sit it on my tool rest, bring it up to a mark, the centre of the mark, turn the machine on, and I've cut that disc, and what I will do is I'll come over and I'll do the same on every other mark. And as I go I may just need to tighten the tailstock slightly, And you can see it all occurs very, very quickly. Turn the machine off, loosen the tailstock off. First bit that comes off is a nice little funnel. It may have some sort of use for something, I'm not sure, but then all of the discs just slip off, and that's a nice professional finish. So, what I do is just clean off. The little texture mark, give it all a good wash and now it's ready to go. It's handy to have a standard frame in front of you when you do all of this. It saves a lot of thought. The frame as far as B space is concerned and dimensions is already there so why not use it. So first thing I want to do is cut some plywood to those dimensions and to save a little bit of time two pieces of ply cut exactly to the width and the depth of the frame. Now in my case I'm using 7mm ply. Uh, you can use thinner ply if you want but it will determine some of the other measurements that we need. Now what I've done is I've put an X on this corner and on the other side an X as well. 
just so that I know which way this frame is going to go together because I'll be drilling uh, all the holes in one go. Now, I said that in this case the frame was going to be 30 millimetres. Well, if I can hold this up so that you can see it. All right. So the top bar, the bottom bar and the, the two end bars uh, they need to be cut to a particular width to give you that 30 millimetres or if you're making the frame bigger than that obviously everything needs to match up. Thickness of that material is about 12 millimetres and this is what I've got. The top bar is cut to length exactly the same as the standard frame and what I have is if I get it around the correct way That piece of plywood will sit over the top so that's nice and easy okay what I've done is I've measured in already the offsets so that I end up with the perfect rectangle so that's just saved a little bit of time once I have the externals for the frame made let's come over here and have a look on the other side of one of the pieces of ply, I've actually marked in the centres for the holes. And I found that a distance, an offset of about 63 millimetres, top and bottom, works well uh, for a full size frame, a full depth frame. I've also found that uh, coming in about 63 millimetres from either end gives me the centres for the, the four outside circles. All I then do is take this distance here, divide it into three, and there I have it. So, that's now ready for drilling. And this is what I've done. Next job. I've just got a couple of pieces of material here. What I need to do now is line up my two sheets perfectly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple them together and actually staple them to this backing board. But what I'm going to do is put a couple of staples inside the circle that I'm going to cut with the hole saw so that as I use the hole saw, those staples will basically hold everything in place and keep the disc in place. So I'll start with one. This is a narrow, a narrow crown stapler. I'll double check this bottom corner. I'll put one here. That means everything is secured. Made a bit of a mistake here. I had some uh, short staples in. I just had to replace those with longer staples. So Sorry about that, so everything's ready to go. Now all of that internal material is waste, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, next job, over to the drill press. I'm using an 86 millimeter diameter cutter, and I've set my depth, and all I have to do now is go through and drill these out. Now I'll just drill one out, and I'll show you the, the end result. Now, as you can see, the centre disc remains in place and the frame is still sturdy. It doesn't matter if the, uh, the drill's a little bit off, as long as the two uh, pieces of ply are lined up, uh, everything will turn out. Now, what I'll do is I'll go and uh, finish drilling all of these holes off and then I'll show you what happens at the end. Well, the hole saw's done its job. If I lift the two pieces of ply off. You can see that the little discs, rather than getting caught up in the hole saw, are just left remaining. I can prise those off that board and I'm right to move on to the next step. Now what I'm going to do is just use some abrasive paper 
and take the sharp burrs off the edges and then I'll show you how we start assembling the whole project. Okay, the little discs are removed. Most of those can be thrown away, but keep a couple of them. About six of those little discs will come in handy when it comes to making the foundation or putting in place starter strips. But that's on the next uh, video clip. So I'll put this to one side and we'll start on the assembly. Number one, make sure that the X is on the outside. Set up the frame roughly, and all I'm going to do is put some glue on the top bar. And I'm going to staple everything in place. I set up according to my offsets. close to one end. I'll just put in one place one staple and then I'll come through all right and then I can continue assembling the rest of this frame so I won't show you the rest of that but that will come together fairly quickly um, and I'll be back in about two minutes when all of this is glued up. Okay, that was about two minutes and half the frame is now assembled. Now onto the other part. I've got an X here. I need the other X on the other side so that they marry up. So this is the removable, removable part of the frame. That's going to come off. And what I'm going to do is make sure that everything is aligned perfectly. And I found that the easiest way at this point is to actually flex our little inserts and put them in place and that will make sure that everything is lined up squarely. Can you see how I'm flexing those little bits of PET to get them in? Whoops, I didn't do that one very well. Let's try that again. Flex them, put them in place and if I put all eight in it just helps me with the alignment. And it's a double check because if I don't get them in correctly, those discs won't sit flat. Two to go. There we have it. Now, now that they're in place, I'm going to put in place a couple of dowels. Now I measured in about 30 millimeters from each end and six millimeters down. I now have some alignment points. And if we turn around and have a look at the uh, drill press, some of those will fall out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one hole to start with making sure everything is aligned nicely. I've set the uh, depth stop. And what I'm going to do is temporarily put piece of dowel into that position. second dowel will sit in place. Now all I'm going to do is mark the length of each dowel, I'll cut it off and I'll put a chamfer on each end. So I'll go and do that and I'll come back. 
Okay, little dowels have been cut. Just a little spot of glue, not much. You don't need a great deal. By the way, I'm using Tight Bond Ultimate here. I'll just put those in and give them a little bit of a start. Not much. I'll put my frame over the top, press it down, and I just tap them home until they're flush. And that's it. And the whole frame now pulls apart. I'll just wipe up any surplus glue. And the last thing I have to make on this frame is some clips to secure it. Now I'll uh, just get some material organized and I'll show you how I make those. To make the clips, I'm using some strapping iron. It's about 40 millimeters wide and you, you can see it's a reasonably thick gauge. And the marking out is quite simple. I want a little turned up lip on the edges, so I'll mark in about five millimeters. Then I'll mark in a further 25 millimeters, followed by 31 millimeters. My frame is 30 millimeters thick. I'm just making that distance one millimeter more. And then I'll reproduce this again, another 25 and another five. It's just a matter now of squaring it all off. There's nothing critical about these measurements. There's a fair amount of leeway as far as the accuracy is concerned. And all I'm using is some chin snips to cut it. So I can cut this to length. And after cutting it to length, all I do is take the burrs off. And that's it. Now I've got another one here where I've taken the burrs off and I'll show you how I bend it. Pardon me, I'll come through. Now, all I'm doing is I'm having the marks facing me on the five millimeter mark, cramp it up in the vise, I'll give it a push back around about 20 to 30 degrees. I'll do the same on the other end. Line it up on the mark, about a 20 or 30 degree bend. And I'll slide down to this next mark, tighten the vise right up. Pull it over. Tap it down to about 90 degrees. Turn it over and I'll do the last one. The last one gets distorted just slightly. Now what I do now is I just give it a bit of a squeeze until I can see that it's a little bit less than 30 millimeters. And if we go over to the frame, that should now squeeze nicely onto the frame. I've got three more made. This will hold the plywood in place. As it goes into the hide. And nothing is going to move. And there we have it. So the completed frame. Quite simple. It doesn't take a long period of time to construct it. The design is pretty well foolproof. And obviously when I want to go and pull everything apart, it's a simple task of removing the clips. And then, if need be, getting in underneath with a hive tool or a knife, removing that section of the frame. Now, my next video clip is going to be the making of the starter strips or foundation and how I position them inside this frame. So until next time, folks, thanks for watching and uh, I'm hoping you enjoy what you've seen so far.